Welcome to our first session of distance education. Uh, first of all, I would like to remind you that these videos may have a copyright, so before sharing them, you should obtain the proper permission uh, for sharing or reproducing. All right, so today we will speak about files and exceptions in Python and just to uh, connect things together, to link things together, this topic is related to uh, object-oriented class, which we discuss it and teach it in Python. Right. So for today's lesson, we will be covering uh, just basic introduction about file input and output, uh, processing of files using loops, um, also processing of records and what these records present as a part of files. And finally, we will speak about exceptions. Exceptions by themselves actually represent uh, one separate topic. However, in, in this case, we just attach it to files uh, because it has a proper application to them. And we will see how later on. In computing systems, we use files a lot for one main reason, to keep data for, for future use. So far, we discussed different types of examples um, in Python where we enter data, let's say, from uh, either the main program or the program itself or from the keyboard. And this data, we usually process it within the program or the program does process the uh, entered data or the used data or whatever provided data. And then we produce an output or anything similar to that, which is actually uh, mainly stored in RAM, in the main memory. So once you uh, terminate the program, the data will not be saved. It will be just uh, erased uh, with the uh, shutdown of the computer, once the computer is shut down from the RAM. So sometimes we need to save the data for future use or for some maybe uh, record. So in this case, we may create files to save data to, and these files usually reside on our computer's disk, you know, the secondary memory, uh, mainly the hard disk. It could be also any type of secondary memory. So this data or the saved data can be retrieved. Uh, we can retrieve it whenever we need to access to it. So this is a way for, uh, you can say, archiving data, saving data. Um, well, what can we do with the files? We can write data to a file. That means saving data to our uh, hard disk or the uh, secondary memory of our, uh, of our computers. All right. Uh, and usually we refer to such a process with output file. Why output? Why do we call it output? Because actually we are writing data to it. We are not retrieving data from it, so we use it as an output instead of just displaying data to the screen and we say, let's say, the console output or whatever we present to the monitor. No, in this case, rather we just save this data to a file, and that's why we call it output file. Look at this uh, illustration. So in this slide, we can see uh, this representation here as a disk is just like the representation of the uh, memory, secondary memory, or let's say the uh, hard disk of our uh, computer. Uh, and we have a file where we store some data as a record. And record actually is like multiple fields of different variables. Uh, comprising or composing, actually, uh, you can say one line in a file. So you can see we have a variable. This variable is numeric type, floating point, and then we have a string and another string. And all of them are actually uh, composing one line in a file. So it could be a proper file just with one line or maybe multiple lines, but this is the way we save. So we take these, uh, you can say, pieces of uh, information or the raw data that we have here, and we store it to a file. And this file is available on the disk of the computer. 
Okay, so uh, once the file is uh, written to the um, memory of the of the system, then what can we do with it? We can open it for reading, or we can read data from it. So basically, reading data from file is the process of retrieving the data from a saved file. And in this case, since we are receiving data from the from a file which is available in our system, we call it input file. Why input file in this case? Because we use data from this file as an input. So the source of the input to our program in this case when we process the data is a file. That's why we process we we sorry we we refer to it by input file. So when we have a saved file and we would like to retrieve some data from it, we have usually three types of operations, opening the file, processing the data in the file, and then closing the file. And this applies also to writing data to a file. We need to open the file for writing, processing, that means writing data to the file, then closing it. Uh, we may do another process of appending data, and we will see later on in practical. So we, we need also to open the file and specify that the mode of operation is uh, appending and process. That means adding or maybe changing uh, some type of data available in, in the file, then after that, closing the file. So look at the um, this process, the illustration of reading data from a file. Let's say this is our file, which is already available on our system. So in order for us to retrieve the data, we need to, uh, you can say, create variable or multiple variables to retrieve the data from uh, the file. And in, in this case, data will be carried, this data or the, these pieces of information will be carried from our uh, computer's disk to the RAM or to the main memory of our computer. And we will see how we can use such a process practically. All right, uh, we have different type, types of uh, files or actually not just uh, limited to one type when we deal with uh, programming with files. However, the idea of using files in uh, Python should be presented in simple, you can say, scenario first. So in order for us to do so, we restrict our application for the time being to text files. Text files actually refer to the type of files that uh, include, uh, you can say, Unicode or ASCII, uh, things that represent actually letters, numbers, um, special characters, and so on. So um, these are actually easy to use, uh, clear for representation. And they have uh, their format represented by dot txt. So this period is the uh, representation of the extension of the file. As, as you know, I, I believe you studied this before in Introduction to Computer Science. And this uh, period, the extension, is ex exactly specifying the, the file format. Uh, we have binary files. We will study them, I believe, in next chapters. Uh, these binary files actually do not have the readable format of a text file. Rather, they have a series of ones and zeros, and we usually use them for serializing or actually some sort of uh, encoding of files that we have. We will discuss this one in later chapters. So let's say we have a file. How can we access the data available in this file? We have two main types of access, or two main ways. The first one is sequential access. Sequential access is exactly the movement of a uh, queuing process, you can say, or just one at a time, one by one, in line. So data at the beginning can be accessed first. If you want to go further, you have to go step by step, and you cannot jump. Uh, in our chapter, in this chapter, we will use a sequential access type. Then we have another type called direct access. The direct access is similar to actually the RAM process. That means uh, we have a way to jump from one point to another without going through all the data in between. 
And uh, this one will be discussed in further chapters, or maybe we will include them within your project. But for the time being, it's not uh, actually discussed. All right. Um, now, assume that we have a file, or we would like to create a file. In order for us to do so, we need to have something what we refer to by file object. File object is a given name, a variable you can say name, a given name that references the file being in use. So the file being in use uh, can be opened for reading, or can if it is available. If it doesn't exist, we can open it for writing, and we can write data to it. Or let's say it, it is available, but we open it for, let's say, appending. So we will have different types of referencing to a file or file object. So this will be uh, determined by the mode of opening, and we will see how uh, you know that goes. So this is the illustration. As you see, variable name is like a given name. It's, it's very similar to the variables that we discussed before, just uh, uh, some sensible name, a name that makes sense when you uh, create it. And remember that uh, when you give a you know, variable name, in this case, um, make it related to the uh, topic of discussion or the problem that you are trying to solve. So we have the file object that links the variable name to the, um, you know, uh, the, the, the file itself. Sorry. So in this case, we have the reference to the uh, file Then we can access or we can have the proper access to the file. OK, so now let's get into the real business and to the real, uh, you can say, uh, programming with files. The first thing we need to learn in Python while dealing with files is the main function that is used uh, for opening files. It's actually open. Its name is open, so this is a function. So there is, uh, you know, what, some type of argument to be passed to the uh, file. Sorry, to the open uh, function. So we have two arguments. Actually, uh, you can say the uh, multiple argument type. We have the file name, and the file name is a string. And this file name must be in including the um, extension and we will see how. And also the mode of opening. The mode of opening can be actually one of three, either opening for reading, but the condition here is that the file exists. The file should exist in our, uh, on our computer memory. For writing, uh, we, we use W. It's also a string. So if the file doesn't exist in this, ca in this case, it will be created from scratch. If it exists, it will be removed, totally deleted, and a new file will be uh, created. And we have appending A for appending. So file object, variable name, a valid variable name, equals open, then the file name, and then the mode. So let's say, let's say just a simple example. Uh, let's say uh, art file because I, I, I assume that I want to create a file for uh, writing, equals open, file name, so here single quotes, we enclose by single quotes, let's say scores.txt. So between quotes here, scores.txt, then we have a string here, let's say the file doesn't exist, so I want to create it, so w, so open for um, writing. So this is just a basic example, and we will see how we take it in practical uh, in the next video. All right. So let's say uh, I did this. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me get back to this slide. Let's say we did this. So art file equals uh, open uh, file name. So scores.txt, and the mode is W. So we did this. Um, well, where the where will the file be opened? Where will it be saved, actually? So this file will be where? Which directory? It's the main directory. It will be in the main directory of Python. So your main directory that you have your Python uh, executable file in will have your 
uh, file. Let's say you are not interested in saving it there. You want to save your file somewhere else. So you need to provide the proper uh, directory for that uh, process. So you need to provide all of it, the URL of your directory. It should be on your computer's memory. And before, just before the uh, whole string of that uh, URL, you need to provide R or type R. This R refers to the raw string. Why? Because we have slashes and these slashes, when they meet uh, special characters, as you know, that they are um, interpreted by our, uh, you know, Python interpreter in a different way, like backslash and is a new line. So it wouldn't exactly understand which is which. So it may think that this is not exactly a URL. Maybe it is just a jumping sequence or escape sequence. So in this case, uh, we need to provide R, the beginning of the uh, string. And I will show you in a practical example later on. Okay. So this is exactly the slide speaking about what I just said about the, uh, you know, the letter R. Okay, so we have already opened the file, let's say, for writing. The file doesn't exist. We opened it for writing data to it. How can we write this data to the, to, to the file? So now we have the file variable or the, uh, you can say, the, the, the variable name that references our file. We can use a method called write to write a string, only a string, to a file. So one thing I have to mention here, uh, when we open files in uh, Python for uh, writing, to write data to, we can write data in the string format. Uh, we cannot exactly write uh, directly uh, numeric format like integer or float. So the data, make sure that your data to be uh, stored to the file or transferred to the file should be in string format. So this is the way, let's say file variable dot write. So this is our function that allows us to write a string to the file. So this string, in order for you to have readable, uh, you can say saving of data or storing of data to the file, usually we write a string at a time. That means one string in one line, then we jump to a new line. So Usually what we do is we write a string here and we add backslash n to it so that the uh, next, uh, you can say, storing process will be in the next line. Once you're done with writing your data to the file, you need to make sure that you close the file. If you don't close the file, in many cases, the process of writing data fails to the file. Uh, the reason why is related to actually a uh, temporary memory that holds the data uh, in buffering, you can say, uh, mechanism. Until we finish all our writing process, it carries it to the, uh, to the hard disk, and that's actually a faster process. I think you took this one in Introduction to Computer Science before. I'm sorry I keep repeating about Introduction to Computer Science because these are actually topics taught that time, uh, I mean, within the course. Okay, let's say we have a file now, and this file has our data stored in it or to it. Uh, we would like to open this file and retrieve our data or read our data from it. So we can use the method instead of write, we can use the method read. However, the, the opening of the file should be actually done uh, based on the uh, mode of reading. So here, let me get back. So you can have file object, let's say in file, since we are going to read data from a file. So it's an input file, open. File name, let's say again, uh, between quotes, scores.txt, the mode between quotes are. So in this case, we will open the file for reading and the file will just be ready for us. Uh, and in this case, we can use read. Read allows us to read the entire content of the file. So no matter how many lines you have, it will just take all of it as a string with all whatever you escape sequences included. So the whole piece of information in the file will be carried to the variable as a string. Uh, 
Now you you may just think of it. How about if it is like hundred pages? It doesn't matter. It will be just considered as a string. It will be it will be uh, you know uh, passed to the variable that you are assigning to this reading process. Okay. How about if you want to read line by line? So we have another method called read line. So uh, the file object dot read will allow us to read the entire file. File object dot read line will allow us to read one line at a time. And in this case, we have some uh, you can say a mechanism for pointing to one line at a time. And once the line is read, the pointer will be incremented and it will be transferred to the next line automatically without our interference. It will just read the line. Once it's, it is done, once the line is read, it goes to the next line and so on. All right. So um, as I said earlier, sometimes we uh, add a new line so that our data stored to the file can be readable. Like let's say I'm storing names. If I do not insert a new line after each name, uh, these names will be messed up. They will be just next to one another uh, in one very long line. And that's not, I mean, practical. So we include the escape sequence of jumping to a new line. But when we read data from a file, this uh, new line will be also read. So in order for us to get rid of it, we sometimes use uh, a function. And this function is compatible to strings. So if we have a string, we can use string name dot rstrip. rstrip means strip the escape sequence from the right side of the string. So we have a string at the right side at the end. The very end of it is backslash n. So we can strip that backslash n. It could be any, anything else other than backslash n. Maybe it could be backslash t. We'll see in the next chapter, not now. So this is like uh, the right side. Some people refer to it by the rear of the string, but I think the proper one is right. So no matter from the rear of the string or from uh, you know the right side of the string, we strip this backslash n, and we will see how this thing is done is done practically later on in, in the practical uh, session. So um, as I said earlier, if you want to open a file, you have to use w uh, from scratch. You have to use the w mode, uh, writing mode. But let's say uh, your file does exist. You don't want to uh, overwrite it. So you can open a, an existing file by the mode appending A. And in this case, the file will not actually be erased. It will just be opened. And the, append, the, the appending of data will happen at the end, the very end. So as I said earlier, we have a pointer points to wherever we are writing. So the last line we wrote to the file, the pointer would point to the next one, actually. And this would be the end of file unless we append some data. All right. So uh, let's say I would like to create a file that contains, let's say, numbers, like, uh, say, some uh, scores, as we said earlier, let's say results of exams or whatever related to numeric values, or let's say ID numbers, which are actually composed of just integer numbers. Uh, as I said earlier, files allow us actually to just store in Python to store, um, you can say, text files. Uh, uh, let me let me correct my statement. Text files in Python allow us to store only strings to them. So how about if I have numerical values? How how will I store them to files? So basically, we need to convert these numbers to string format and then uh, store them. How do I do that? we have the uh, string function, str. So this str allows us to, you can say, encapsulate or actually cast uh, a numerical value and convert it to a string. And then later on, when we get it, we can convert it back to an integer by using int or float by using float to its original state. So uh, in, in this case, as I said, you just need to make sure what type of uh, numeric data it is, if it is integer or float, in order for you to convert it back 
when you want to retrieve it. All right, so we said earlier that we may store multiple lines, many lines uh, to one file. So as I said, we can use read just to read the entire contents, but that is not actually very useful. Sometimes we, not, we need to go through the lines one by one. So how can we do it? Well, we can use while loop and we can sense the end of file by null. So this is referring to the end of file. It's very similar to other programming. You can say uh, languages like Java, for example, the end of file is also uh, determined by certain functionality. Here we can use while line. So we read the line first and then we you can say test or inspect if this line is equal to end of file or not. If it is not, we enter the loop and we process and we make sure that we read the next line. So out of the loop, we read one line and then we test because this is pre-tested loop. And if this line is not the end of file, that means we can go inside the processing of the, uh, you can say data and read a new line, uh, sorry, process and then read a new line. And this will be clear actually when we give a real practical example after this theory. So this is a, an illustration in the flow chart. We open the file first for reading, we read the line and we test if this is the end of the file or not. If it is not, process the item, read a new line, and then inspect. Once the uh, end of file is sensed, we exit. So we finish our processing, you can say functionality. All right, we, we can also use for loop. So for loop is somehow uh, possible, uh, similar to the range function actually. If you remember, we use the range function within before for creating loops. Let's say for uh, x in range, let's say certain range, let's say 10 or whatever. We can use for line, that means one line from a file in a file object. So as long as the file contains lines, lines of whatever stored, you know, lines, it will just pass one line at a time, similar to the integer numbers. These lines are uh, counted as integer numbers, just the their count only, not their contents. Okay, it's like one, two, three, four uh, in the pointer of the file object. Okay. In in files, we have a topic we call it uh, records. Uh, basically, a record is is a file actually, but uh, the information stored in this file is represented by multiple fields. What does it mean? Let's say we speak about an employee or a student, since you are students, we speak about a student. Uh, what determines the main characteristics of students? Uh, well, we have the ID number. You are university students, you have some ID, metric number it could be, or enrollment number. So you have an ID and you have your name, and maybe you have your department. Maybe you have also your, uh, well, level of education or your GPA, whatever. So these are fields. It's like, you know, they are referred like, uh, sorry, they are presented like uh, columns, okay? Well, we don't exactly have columns and files, so we create fields. Maybe we can just leave a space between one, one field and another, or maybe uh, multiple spaces like backslash T for some jump, you know, after each field. So for each person, we, we will have a record and we will have maybe multiple or, you know, a number of records in the same file. How can we process them? Similar to the way we, we, we discussed about processing files earlier, we read line one line at a time. So this line could have multiple fields and they could be uh, composed of multiple lines or more than one line, or they may be uh, written on one line with different, like you can say, uh, artificially made columns. Okay, so we can give uh, an example about this in practical as well. All right, so as I said earlier, when we uh, need such an application, we need actually uh, things with multiple description, multiple characteristics. Uh, one Only one piece of information is not enough. Uh, we may have, uh, you know, some application like, uh, let's say we have a record of students. 
let's say we we may need to add a record display records all of them maybe we need to search for a record modify records delete uh, well these things are all possible and we will discuss them uh, in our practical session as an example i just don't want to extend too much the um, theory so exceptions now since the um, topic is about files when we deal with files usually we have uh, some you can say problems that make the program halt or stop uh, imagine that i'm trying to open a file for reading but the file actually does not exist what will happen what will happen in this case is exactly something we call the creation of the traceback uh, you can say uh, you know uh, traceback error or message that we have in python and this is exactly an exception exception is what actually an error your program has an error and this causes the program to halt stop running and when the program stops running it displays to you a traceback message and I am sure you have seen this one before. I mean, uh, maybe it came, you know, with, within our discussion of lab sessions, maybe it came, we came across with some examples of this. So in brief, uh, we, we have different types of exceptions. It's just an error caused by certain, you can say, uh, maybe mismatch of a process or maybe a wrong process or maybe a wrong use of, uh, you can say, values or data. Let's say I'm supposed to enter a numeric data. Uh, however, I enter, let's say, a string. What will happen? How my program will process it? It will not be able to process it. And in this case, it will raise an exception. So the exception in, in, uh, in scientific, you can say, or actually in technical term, we say the exception is raised by the program due to an error. So as I said, the error could be an in, in, a wrong input or it could be a wrong, actually, uh, you can say uh, use of a function or uh, similar things, okay? I explain about the non-numeric data to a string or opposite the other way around maybe, or it could be a reading from a file that doesn't exist. So these are typical examples. So since we have a code that potentially may create uh, an exception or may raise an exception, how can we deal with it? If you leave it on its own, you may get your program stuck with uh, you know such halt due to the uh, you know uh, exception. So in this case, we use try except. Uh, you can say uh, exception handler try except for try usually we refer to try look at this it's just like a block try with some uh, you know scope so we have this column to start up the scope for try we provide the codes or the statements that may raise an exception and we refer to this by try suite uh, it's like just a try block okay and once we are finished done with these statements that may create an error then we provide our accept exception so except the keyword is except and this except we must state the exception type or name in this case if we are not quite sure about the exception name uh, i will give you the way to manage whatever exception comes to you practically now this is the way so we have two pieces of uh, you can say scopes here one for the try and this is the try suite and the other one is the accept close so basically we have uh, try all the statements that may cause an error or may create an exception raise an exception and then except for exception for handling the exception in this case. And then we write a statement. Usually the statement or statements here just tell the user that there is an exception, there is a problem, there is an error. 
So this is what I was referring to, the try suite. It actually uh, comprises the, sta the statements that may cause an exception. And the handler of the exception is exactly with accept, uh, you, within the accept block, you can say, or uh, you can say close. All right. So uh, how the process is done. Let me get back to the previous slide. Let's say we have some statement here and the statement is causing an error. What happens? Uh, let's say we have three statements. The first statement is executed. Let's say some display has no problem. The second statement has uh, an exception. It has uh, some error while uh, interpreting or while executing the file, the code. So what happens? The execution here will stop and it will jump to accept. It will process the statements within accept and will not come back. It won't process any further. It will just skip whatever statement next to that accept or the error, the exception raising, you can say, line. And will come to accept and process all the statements and just uh, go to next, whatever available next to that. So the idea is like this. If there is no any exception to be raised, it will just process. It will never touch except. Okay. If there is an exception, it will process whatever before that exception. Maybe it's the first statement. If the first statement, nothing will be processed here. Nothing will be executed. It will jump directly to the exception. It will never come back. It will just jump to exception. It will process the statements within the except except block or the handler. And we'll just carry on next as a sequential process. The, uh, as you know, the uh, programming, Python programming, follows the sequential process. So it will not come back to the, uh, you know, try statement. Okay. So this is the explanation of what, what I was just referring to. Uh, let's say we have uh, multiple exceptions. As I said earlier, we may have different types of exceptions, exception name. We may have a value error, maybe. We may have an IO error exception, okay? So these uh, come with different types. You may tell me, okay, how may I know? How may I memorize them? Actually, practice makes things perfect. So. You need to practice about, uh, you know, the exception types, and we will see in practical. I give you multiple types now. Maybe I'll give you like three or four types, and then in the next few chapters, we will have other types. You don't have to memorize them. You don't have to do that. Even my questions usually will not include uh, things related to the memorization of, you know, uh, how to write an I.O. exception. Usually, this is not my type of questions. All right. So let's say we have different types of exceptions. How can I handle them? I can create multiple exception handlers. So I can create except, let's say, exception name one, then some statements, then another except, exception name two, and so on. So it's like, you know, very similar to if else statement, but this is try except. So we may have uh, you know, a number of exceptions, except, 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 with specific uh, type of exception. Uh, we may have, uh, you know, different type of exceptions, and also we may, or except, except close, we may include also finally. So this one, finally close is like, if none of the exceptions, uh, you can say, uh, are evaluated, so none of them. Let's say I couldn't uh, catch any of those. The exception is something else. So finally, we could cover that one. Let's say, uh, well, uh, I have an exception about value error, and I will give you in practical what value error means. I'm not sure what to display as a message. I, I don't know, okay? Let's say I know that I may have a value error. Value error is like, uh, you know, uh, inputting some wrong value instead of inputting let's say uh, an integer value or a floating point we enter string and that's a value error is like a mismatch in the value let's say i'm not sure what to print what to tell the user so i can use uh, you know as function to present to me an error so i can just display this error print error and that's enough for me 
to get some, uh, you can say, default message to tell the user about the generated or the raised exception. Uh, we can use else also. Uh, I said earlier about, uh, finally I forgot else, where we can use try except else. It's possible. Let's say, well, I, I try to uh, place except name, maybe value error, but I'm not sure if I covered all the exceptions. I may use else. It's possible. So it's also else suite referred to. Uh, it's like a block of statements that we execute, let's say, after the, uh, you know, you know, um, try and accept. So it's possible. That's possible. As and as a, uh, sorry, as I said earlier, let's say I, I apply try accept uh, multiple. Let's say multiple exceptions, maybe. Okay. And then I'm not quite sure if I covered all of them. I can use finally. It's somehow similar to else in this sense. Okay. We will see them in practical how we deal with those practically. Okay, let's say for some reason uh, I did my best to catch the exception. I couldn't, uh, you know, catch it. I'm not quite sure if I covered all of them. So if you do not uh, write like else or finally, your program will ultimately halt. So it will just, uh, you can say, uh, will not process the exceptions that you considered and will halt. So sometimes, if you are not quite sure about all the exceptions that you uh, included, it's, it's a good idea to add finally or to add some, you know, uh, a process to include whatever uh, exceptions that may not have been included within your, uh, you can say, coding. Uh, how do we know all exceptions? There are actually documentation for all exceptions. You don't have to worry about them now. However, I'll try to add just a link for uh, these exceptions, but they will come actually uh, in next chapters. A lot of them will come, will appear in next chapters. All right, so uh, I'm sorry I delayed uh, in this session. However, it was uh, really needed for, like for the elaboration, for the detailed explanation. So in this uh, chapter, we explained about, uh, you can say, the reasoning of file use and how we create files, how we can read from these files, amend from the files. We didn't take practical, and as I said, I restricted to other topic as I will use the, um, I mean, the Python interpreter. I don't want to keep jumping between, uh, you know, both pages here and there. So how we create file names and how we can open them, how to write data to a file, how to read data from a file, how to process records just theoretically, and we discussed the exceptions, trace back, uh, trace back messages, how they are generated and for what reason, and how we handle the exceptions, how we handle multiple exceptions, and the reason we use sometimes, uh, you can say, else with except and finally as well. Okay, thank you very much for holding your patience for this long session, and um, I will just create the next video for practical. Soon enough, I will upload it. Please go through this uh, uh, session, and uh, if you have any question, feel free to post it or to send it to me, and I'll work on just, um, you know, replying as soon as I can. Okay, goodbye.